Hi, this is Rich Harrington. I'm the publisher for Photo Focus. And last night I updated my iOS device. iOS 10 came out and I took my iPhone 6S up to a newer version of software. Now this is not the new camera. That new phone has not delivered yet. But I wanted to show you what these RAW files can do. So I just took a few shots around the house. Nothing fancy here, but this is good. Tough lighting conditions. And look at the latitude we now have in the raw file, the ability to work with true raw data. So for example, let's play a little bit here with the shadows and the highlights. I'm gonna recover those just a little bit, some of that detail that was lost, while at the same time, popping the whites so they're nice and vibrant and getting really rich blacks, which I like. Put a little bit of clarity in there, that's helping well. And uh, let's quickly toss on a curve and now switch over to noise. Now, the sharpening and noise here, this is where things stand out. You know, the iPhone is not the largest sensor in the world, to say the least. We're zoomed in here at 200%, but let's apply some sharpening. So I can take that up a bit and then hold down the Option key to drag the masking slider here. Same in Camera Raw or Lightroom, and that tweaks it a little bit. So that's looking a lot better. I can adjust the radius there a little bit, and that's definitely sharper. At the same time, let's reduce the noise a little bit. So we'll turn that up and adjust the amount of contrast and do the same for color. All right, that's looking a lot better. Let's explore that here side by side. And you see that the sharpness, the overall detail in that image is looking a lot better. And a lot of the noise has been cleaned up. All right, let's pull that back up. And uh, it's definitely got a lot more to the overall image, which is great. Remember, you can use all the other great stuff you're used to here. So if you want to make a particular area a little more saturated, you can pull that up. Same here. Grab another area. Pull that down to add emphasis. Works great. And uh, let's just finish this out real quick. A little bit of a vignette to guide the eye in towards the center. And I'm just gonna darken this edge here a little bit. We'll pull that down. There we go. Just to paint that a little bit. Remove those distractions. Same thing here from the top. All right, let's take a look at another tough situation. In this case, I shot a living room with a mixture of daylight, incandescent lights, and electronic appliance. It's definitely a tough scenario here. And let's see what we can do. So first up, we'll start in the basic tab, do us some exposure there, and it helps. We've got a lot of latitude here. Remember, you can always drag on the histogram. So let's bring up those midtones and shadows a little bit. There we go. And pull down the overall white point. There we go. I'm actually gonna take the highlights down a little more to recover that. And look at how that one lamp that's on is recovered, bringing back all that detail. There we go, a little bit of clarity, bring out the color. I like that. And there's definitely noise in this image. I was shooting this under available light and the iPhone 6S is prone to noise, but we can tighten this up here. Let's start by sharpening some of the details first up and holding down that option key as I drag the masking slider, lets me better define what's gonna be sharpened. And then I'll do the same thing here. I will remove some of the color noise, which is really heavy in this image. And if we take a look at that there, let's go side by side. Definitely an improvement. Now I like how that was able to recover a wide range of details. Now let's come on in here and we're gonna to go to the new tool here for transform. We'll go back to the single view and I'm just gonna do a fixed alignment here to restore the grid of the room, which is looking really good. So I love how quick and easy this is to take advantage of all these tools. Remember, the ability to use the spot tool here will allow you to go after certain areas. So for example, I'm gonna pull down the luminance here just a little bit, but brighten up that on the screen. And that's amazing how much flexibility you have. Now, here's a real tough situation. There's nothing artistic about this photo. I simply wanted to shoot something with terrible backlight to see how it would handle it. Something just blown out back there. So let's start by recovering the highlights, recovering the white point, and it's amazing what came back. Now, I'm gonna lift up the 
blacks there, pull them down actually just a little, but bring up the overall exposure. It's looking pretty good. And a little bit of clarity. And it is surprising how much detail has come back. Remember too, you also have the ability to paint. So if you wanted to paint out some more exposure, you can actually paint right on the raw file there and bring back even more detail beyond what the slider supported. So that takes a little bit more time than just pulling a slider, but it's great to be able to get in there and bring a lot of that back. So some of these areas here where the exposure is particularly bad, it's wonderful to be able to paint on that raw file. And let's just bring those down a little bit there, these stems here on the right. There we go, that feels a little bit better. Now, all sorts of controls in here with the raw file. Really, the main benefit here is on sharpening and noise reduction. I love the ability to get in there and dial in those details. Reduce the color noise. And let's take a look at the writing on the bottle here. Really comes through quite nicely for that sensor. We've got transparency, we've got glass, we've got diffraction, and all of that is holding up remarkably well for a small handheld camera. Now this isn't going to replace my DSLR or mirrorless anytime soon, but it is quite attractive just how good this is becoming. The ability to actually keep that data, get the results that you're expecting, and work with a full RAW file means that the overall benefit here is pretty intense. Plus, you've got that flexibility on the RAW file to, after the fact, tweak the white balance so it's exactly right. You don't have to worry about burning that in and a lot of the color cast issues that pop up. A lot more flexibility there on white balance, so a really big boost. So there you have it, three RAW files off the iPhone as I stumble around my house after a late night of working and waiting for that iOS update to drop, but uh, it is working, and they did release the bug fix update. That was the one I was waiting for. There was a lot of initial complaints that the first push was bricking people's phones, causing them to lock up. They did put another version out, that's the one I was waiting for and fortunately came on the same day. So pull that down, get yourself an app like Lightroom Mobile or the camera app from 500px that allows you to actually capture those raw files. Each one's gonna be about 10 megabytes, but you got a lot more data to work with.